A few have pointed to Obama as being the biblical antichrist. We will present a false speculation and a potential possible speculation. One such suggestion floating on the internet is based on his election theme chant, Yes We Can. Yes We Can, Yes We Can, Yes We Can, Yes We Can, Yes We Can. The rumor is that if you play it backwards, then you will hear, Thank You Satan. I decided to give it a try, and here's what I heard. It sounds pretty close to me, but is this just pure coincidence, or was it pre-planned by someone? Well, yes, someone could have deliberately looked for a slogan to fit this suggestion. However, with no evidence to that fact, we can only assume that it was pure coincidence. With the Bible, however, there is no coincidence. We must, we want to examine one from the Gospel of Luke, but first, let's examine some examples from the Old Testament. On the left side of the screen, we read the list of the first 10 generations born to Adam as found listed in the book of Genesis. On the right side, we find the English translations for the Hebrew names. What is absolutely fascinating is that when you read the names in order, they define the Gospel of Christ in a very condensed version. Man is appointed mortal in sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down, teaching his death shall bring the despairing comfort and rest. Coincidence? Probably not. Statistically, this is very unlikely, especially considering the fact that the Jewish nation did not understand this message until Christ presented it. Hebrew is a very different language from English. At the top of the slide we have a sentence in English. The home attendant went off duty at five. In English we could chop up the sentence by moving the spaces between words. The results are usually gibberish with an occasional interesting word appearing. Hebrew is different. It was designed to convey hidden meanings in this manner. In our example, if we take the last two letters of home, M-E, and the first two letters of attendant, A-T, we get the word meat, a coincidence but hardly meaningful. The Hebrew word Ishmael means God will hear in English. If we search through the Old Testament for examples of where the letters that form the Hebrew word Ishmael, as in our example with meat, are part of two separate words, we find three examples. The examples are listed below and all three carry the same meaning you will not hear, or will not hear, or will not listen, or hearken. The hidden message about Ishmael is that God is willing to hear him, but Ishmael is not willing to listen to what God has to say to him. If you read the Old Testament stories about Ishmael, you will find that this message is very characteristic of Ishmael. This is just another example of hidden messages in the Bible that God has written to teach us things we need to know and understand about God. Daniel 9.25 is one of the most outstanding passages of Scripture. Events of Daniel occurred in the 6th century BC. This is the famous prophecy known as the 70 weeks of Daniel. The date of its writing has been hotly disputed, but it is part of the Septuagint, which was translated in 285 BC, so it must have been written prior to that date. The interesting fact is that we know the exact date of some of these events. Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Jerusalem in 445 BC. Our tax acts issued a command to rebuild the city of Jerusalem. The date is well documented. Daniel prophesied that the Messiah would die, be cut off 69 weeks of years after that proclamation. Obviously, the calendars were different and have changed over the years. We are in debt to Sir Richard Anderson and his book, The Coming Prince. He goes through all the calculations and how he arrives at these dates, adjusted to our frame of reference. The prophecy to rebuild the temple was issued on March 14, 44, 5 BC. The 173,880 days is calculated from 69 weeks of years at 70 years per week 
which is in 483 years. The prophetic year is 360 days. 483 times 360 gives us the 173,880 days. We add that to March 14th and we arrive at April 6, 32 AD. Most scholars accept this date as the date on which Jesus Christ was crucified. These are just a few of the coincidences that cannot be coincidences. They are there by design and for us to learn more about the nature of God. This leads us to our main point. The New Testament was written in Koine Greek, but we knew very little about Koine Greek until the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Most of the interpretations of the New Testament was based on Classical Greek, which we knew much about from numerous sources. We have here a quote from Revelation. Let anyone who has a mind calculate the number of the beast, for it is a man's number, and the number is 666. Revelation 13, 18. The phrase, who has a mind, was very confusing to the translators because they were uncertain as to the exact meaning of the phrase. Thanks, in part, to the works of Michael Wood, we now know that the phrase could better be translated as anyone with half a brain. In other words, the identification of the Antichrist will be obvious to anyone who has even a half a brain. So, if the Antichrist is present today, we should easily be able to identify who he is. Well, let's take a look at a passage from Luke 10.18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning from the heaven. The New Testament was written in Greek, but Jesus and his disciples generally spoke in Hebrew or Aramaic. <clears throat> this here is the trans English translation of what they spoke. The question we are asking here is what did Jesus say here in the Hebrew language of that day? One tool that is often used in studying the Bible is Strong's Concordance. It identifies each word used in the Bible by a number with the pronunciation and definition for each word. The word Satan is identified in Strong's number 7854. The word for lightning would be Strong's number 1300. The word for fall from heaven would be Strong's number 1116. So the phrase would be, I beheld Satan, Barak, U, Bama. I beheld Satan as Barack Obama. Is this significant? Definitely. Does this prove that Obama is the Antichrist spoken of in the Bible? That determination I leave to you.